You're so good. Why don't you just begin to thank God for something He's done in your life. Thank Him that we're here in this place. Thank Him that His plans are coming to pass. You've been asking and asking, but begin to thank Him. Thank Him for healing. Thank Him for all that He's doing. We thank You, God Almighty. There truly is none like You. And we're so grateful to be here. We're so grateful. Touch every life in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God is good, church. Amen. Oh, well, you may be seated, I suppose. You know, we've got to this place here. We're all trying not to be emotional. but it really feels unreal. When I drove in this morning, I thought I'm here at seven o'clock to build a stage or to lay a carpet or to do something, but we're here to worship God. The aim is to worship Him in this place, to come together and celebrate His goodness and His greatness. And, uh, you know, words don't, I don't know, words, what do we, what, you know, we cannot express our gratitude to everybody for what they've done here. And, uh, when the vision all began, to think that we'd be here today, just in like two months or so, has been quite incredible. And we've got a number of people to thank. I mean, look at our worship team. Some of them are up here. Uh, Kevin's enjoying his drum booth over there. Uh, we will have a, a blind in there at some point. I think next week it's coming. So if the car lights are shining on you, it'll be fine. But why don't we give our worship team a hand? Thank you, guys. You may be seated. Thank you so much. I almost feel like, don't leave me alone here. <laughs> it's a strange, different place, right? For those of you who are joining us for the first time, we welcome you. Those who are visiting just to see what's up here, we welcome you as well. And I know that, as we've said, that God is at work and He's doing something. And a vision that He showed and a, and a word that He gave me many, many years ago uh, is starting to come to pass in different ways. And so we're grateful for that. Uh, do you hear there's no echo here either? Remember that uh, there was echo everywhere, so you just have to laugh louder, okay? If I say a joke is not funny, just laugh nonetheless, okay? Um, there we go. That's great. <laughs> but we've got so many people to thank. You know, our kids for now are going to be at Mozambique, and we want to just thank Mozambique for what they have uh, done for us in giving us a space. We're still getting our kids' space ready, um, so as you can see, there's still a lot of work to be done outside, and... Uh, uh, there's so many people. We, you know, we have air conditioners. Someone that doesn't even come to our church, his wife comes, his father-in-law comes, and uh, he said, whatever you need with air conditions, conditioners, I'll do it, and he moved them over. Just done. You know, there's so many things. People even gave glue for the carpets, just little things. And, you know, we just want to say a big thank you to everyone, whether you're here or whether they're not. We're just so grateful. Even our plumber, Jabo, I said, please, Jabo, please tell me, uh, you know, uh, don't surprise me at the end of all of this. He said, no, don't worry. This is the church, and uh, you'll just pay for materials. It's fine. Nothing else. Blessing, isn't it? TMNS Electrical, I think they're here today. They've helped us so much with electricity and with cables, and you know cables are things you don't see. Well, okay, those are expensive. <laughs> and just so many thank yous. I don't even know the garden, the paint, the mezzanine plans that are still coming. We haven't managed to get the mezzanine up on that side and on this side uh, just to, to make some more space Food, as Belinda spoke about, the blind that is coming, help, all sorts of things that have happened, stack of doors outside. If you just look around you, all I want to say is this, Grace Place, when you look around you, you see you. Because everyone has played a part in what we have here today. You know, some people have come and said to us, congratulations, but it's congratulations to all of us. Because we've all given something, we've all played a part, we've all done something, whether it's praying, giving, helping, sweeping, feeding, whatever the case may be, we've all done something and this is us so again i know we don't clap too often but why don't we just give ourselves a round of applause <laughs> and then that day we met jessica we've mentioned jessica a few times i know jessica somewhere in the in the in the scheme over there 
You know, we met her and then uh, spoke to Amanda, who's also here, and we want to welcome you, Amanda. Um, we are so grateful to be part of this community. Thank you for allowing us to come in here and be a part of that community. And uh, we're grateful that we met on the right days and everything just works out as God's plan. You know, God has a plan. And sometimes we wonder why things are delayed. We wonder why we're not ready to step forward because God is not ready to move just yet. There's other things that he's putting in place before we can come. And so we're so grateful to that. And then, of course, my family are here. Um, you know, my sister Natalie uh, from Cape Town, she's always wanted to get to Grace Place. It's taken her 12 years. <laughs> but finally... Uh, we said next time she comes, she's got to sing for us and play the piano. She also was a worship leader in her previous church, and uh, uh, she, she's here today. My mom-in-law made it. She kept saying every day, you're working so late. I feel so sorry for you. Isn't there anything I can do? So I said, if you can lift a steel beam, you can come and help us. <laughs> so she just stayed at home, and that was fine, you know? Uh, you know, so, so many people, my brother David came up from Cape Town. They've been helping uh, just doing anything, running around. And my dad, of course, uh, is here and helped so much. You saw him, those of you who worked, he was here with us at 7 and he left at 10 o'clock. If we left at 10 o'clock, he was here just working, making sure everything was running smoothly and we're so grateful. And obviously, you know, as we said goodbye to our L9 and L10 at the shopping center in Greenstone and we're here, obviously we're here and uh, we, we paid tribute to everybody that we had lost along the way and as we move into here, it's also emotional in some way because of the people that aren't with us today to celebrate. And I was just thinking how they would have loved to have been here. I'm sure you, would have, you could think of people who you know would have loved to have been here to celebrate this occasion and this opening and this, really this, as we dedicate this place to God for his use and for his glory. And uh, I don't even know who I'm missing out. Sister Nikki's here. We've got family, uh, nieces here. There's a whole lot of people that have visited. So thank you for coming along. I'm going to stop there because I think I need to preach, right? I didn't come here to say thank you. Uh, we came here to say thank you. That's our biggest thanks to God Almighty for what he is doing here in our lives, for what he's doing and what he is going to do. Um, thank you to him. Amen. So you know, the last two weeks here have been quite, quite strange. There's a lot of strain. Those of you saw, some of you might have seen a different side of me, not too different, but I mean, you know, maybe I was walking around, zoned out like a zombie, just walking in a direction, not knowing where I was going. You know, I think that was for all of us. We were all just working a lot. And the one day I remember standing right over there in between the two doors here, just daydreaming, just staring out, just staring like this. And I think somebody said, are you okay? And I said, I'm actually just downloading something. And it was part of the... <laughs> You laugh, but it's the message today. <laughs> and today's message is entitled, Take Two. You know, when we started in Greenstone, it was something that we were beginning with. And I believe this is Take Two, and it's not in a negative sense of Take Two, it's in a very positive sense, this Take Two. And I want to speak about Take Two because as I was daydreaming as well, I was thinking, why is it that we're having to redo so much? You know, you build the wall and it's a little bit wrong or it's a little bit skewed. We, we do certain things and it's like, as we're about to finish, oh no, it's wrong, we need to redo it or we need to fix it. Have you ever had that in your life where you do something, you go, I should have done it that way. Oh, we should have planned this better or we should have built it differently or I should have said this differently and we don't get this chance to actually repeat what we needed to do. We don't have a take two. Well, let me tell you, as long as we're living here on this earth, God has given us a take two. He has given us another chance. Even where we have failed, he gives us another chance to do things that he can do through us, even if we've done it wrong. And so I was thinking, while I was standing there, after somebody asked me, is everything okay? I thought to myself, what is the spiritual significance? I've got to ask myself that question of take two. Besides it being a chocolate in the 80s and 90s. How many of you remember the chocolate? All it takes is two, take two, take two. Anybody? Who remembers that? Let's just see you're giving away your age is what you're doing right now. Okay. <laughs> Some of you are looking like, what's that? It's a chocolate. There were two chocolates in one packet. How amazing was that? I mean, that was like revolutionary. <laughs> you could have one now and one later. <laughs> so I thought, what's the spiritual significance? Because when you take two, if, you, if you're in a movie set or if you're doing a, a preparing for a play, if you don't get it right, they snap that thing, whatever it's called, and they say, take two. It means something wasn't right, something went wrong, or you could do something better. And so in thinking about this phrase, take two, I thought to myself, well, how can we 
apply this to our lives? How can we do it? How can we apply it so that when we have made a mistake or when we are on something new in our lives or a new season, how do we get it right on the take two? Not that there has to be something wrong with take one. How do we get it right on take two? And so I just thought, because we're talking about take two, I have two points that I'd like to share with you today. And uh, the first one is this. In order, when we, when we have a take two, one of the reasons we will have it is to reset. Reset. You know, sometimes we just need to reset. How many of you got your phones with you here? We love our phones, don't we? The other day I went to go and get a coffee. And as I was walking out of Seattle, there were people full in the booth. There were people in the booth, so many in each booth. And every single person was on their phone. And I was trying to see what they were doing. So I looked past like this. And I saw they, that lady's playing a game. This guy's, you know, that scroll, <laughs> scroll, 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 scroll. People were just on their phones. No one was really talking to each other. And we land up doing this in life. And we need to re reset. I'm not talking about our phones right now. But those of you who have got phones, which is every one of us, have you ever tried to give a phone away? You give a phone away, what do you do? You think, man, I've got all my things on here. I've got all my stuff on here. What do I do? We do a reset, right? So that it's all back to the factory settings before we give it away. And so this is what sometimes a take two is like. It's like we are to reset something that is either wrong or something that we didn't like. When we get a phone, we add all the important stuff, the telephone numbers, the contacts, we add all those things. And then sometimes we add things that are not really necessary. We add apps that we shouldn't maybe have. It's getting very quiet here <laughs> on our opening service. We add things or we start connecting with people that we know we shouldn't really connect with. And so what I thought today was we're going to just choose seven people and we're going to come and ask you just to share some of the things on your phone. I'm not joking. It's not a joke. <laughs> but there are two things we can do with our phones. We can have a hard set or we can have a soft reset. And so I just want to speak to you about that in this point. So basically there are three points, but I've put two into one. Sometimes in our lives, we just need a soft reset. You know, you're living your life and everything's going fine, but you just know something inside should be different. And you look at your life and you go, I know that I should maybe love my wife more. I should maybe pay attention to things in my life more. I should maybe not have certain people in my life that much. I should maybe not be doing things that I know are wrong. We ask ourselves those questions. And so we do a soft reset where we, where we think like, I just need to reset and tweak certain things in order to get my life back on track. Well, there was a man in the Bible, and I want you to open your Bibles to Luke chapter 22 and verse 54. A man who did something terrible. He hated himself for doing it. He probably didn't like who he was after all that he had done. And he, all he, this guy needed was just to make a few changes and he made this reset in his life. And maybe in your life right now, you find yourself here, we just so happen to be opening Grace Place here in Linksfield, and you thought, let me come and see what the church is like, and you're feeling like, my life hasn't quite been right. It's not terrible. I still love God. I still pray. I'm still fine. Maybe it's time for a soft reset. So this is the story of Peter, and we know it well. We often read it at, Christ, at Easter time, where Peter denies Jesus. And so let's read together. If you don't have your Bible with you or your phone with you, this time you can look at your phone now. Don't play games. Don't go scrolling. Just watch on the screen or read it in your Bible. Verse 54 says, So they arrested him. And led him to the high priest's home, and Peter followed at a distance. This is at the arrest of Jesus. Just before this, Jesus had told his disciples that you're all going to deny me. And Peter was the one who spoke up as always. He was always the one to try and do something. He stood up and he said, Lord, I will never deny you, no matter what. I will even lay my life down for you. I will not deny you. Verse 55, so the guards lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it, and Peter joined them there. And a servant girl noticed him in the firelight and began staring at him. And finally she said, this man, pointing to Peter, was one of Jesus' followers. But Peter denied it, and he said, woman, I don't even know him. Just a few moments before, he was saying, I'll never deny you. I don't even know him. After a while, someone else looked at him and said, you must be one of them. No, man, I'm not, Peter retorted. About an hour later, someone else insisted. 
This must be them, one of them because he is a Galilean too. But Peter said, man, I don't know what you are talking about. And immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And Jesus actually said to Peter, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And look at what happens. As soon as that rooster crows, it registers in Peter's mind that I have just denied Jesus three times. And what makes it even worse, at that moment, the Lord turned because he was there. He was held by the centurion. At the moment, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And suddenly the Lord's words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. And Peter left the courtyard weeping bitterly. We know that Peter was a character. He wanted to please Jesus with everything he did. But at this moment, it must have been one of his lowest moments in life. He denied Jesus. He disappointed himself. He must have hated himself for doing it. And just as he denies Jesus, he looks and he sees. Jesus is watching him saying, you see, I told you, you're going to deny me three times. And in this disappointment and in this upset, Peter hadn't really fallen off the boat. He didn't have to go and restart his whole life. All this guy needed was a soft reset. He had to go and repent. And some of us, we need to do that. We need to go and repent. Some of us need to do things in order to move forward into this take two moments of our lives where we move away from the take one. Peter had to get rid of that denial app on his phone and just shift it off and say, I can't deny Jesus anymore. We sometimes have to get certain things off our phones or in our hearts, let's say. That unforgiveness app, we need to get rid of it. That hatred app, we need to get rid of it. All those things that do not belong in our lives. We need to get rid of it. And maybe it's in your life, something like this. If you want to take two, like we have a take two right here. If you want to take two, deal with those things and have a soft reset. What in your life is pulling you away from God? Because it's time to reset. When we look at our lives, there are many things we can live and get by with. But if it's not God's best, why are we living with it? So the second kind of reset is a hard reset. It's getting back to the manufacturer's settings. It's going to that settings page, finding it however you find it. If you can't find it, you Google it. And then, because we've given phones away, you Google to find it. How do you re reset the whole phone? And you reset, and then you go back in just to make sure it's just reset properly. And then you're going to get your messages and everything else that you have on your phone. Sometimes we need this hard reset. You know when a hard reset really starts is when we give our lives to Jesus. You know, we have this life that we're living, a life in the past, a life of whatever we've been living. And then all of a sudden we decide one day we find ourselves at church. We find ourselves speaking to somebody and we realize that our lives are just a mess and we need Jesus. And that becomes a hard reset where we say to ourselves, I need to give up what I've been doing. I need to change the way I've been doing things. And I need to begin to do things in a totally different way. It is a hard reset. I think of Noah. That was a hard reset. People were wicked. They were evil on the face of the earth. And what did God do? He wiped out the whole earth, everyone that wouldn't turn, everyone that wouldn't repent. Just Noah and his family were on this ark and they were saved. No one else. That's a hard reset. And maybe in your life today, you're looking at it and you think, I just need this hard reset. I need to change everything. Then today's a good day to start. Follow with me as I read from Genesis chapter 6 and verse 18. But I'm going to establish a covenant with you. You'll board the ship. You and your sons, your wife and your son's wives will come on board with you. And you also are also to take two, take two, take two of each living creature, a male and a female, on board the ship to preserve their lives with you, two of every species, two of everything, so that they preserve their lives along with yours. Also get all the food you'll need and store it up for you and them. Even there, see, it's confirmation. Take two. He had to take two of everything. And if we don't look at our lives and want to change, we are never going to reset anything. If Peter didn't look at his life and want to change, I don't know how his life would have ended. And so we need to come to a point in life where we are willing to change. We must want to change. 
Maybe you need a hard reset. I don't know. Maybe you just need a soft reset in your life. Today is a new beginning for us. It's a new chapter for Grace Place. It is a take two moment for us. But not in a way where we're resetting our lives, not where we made such a huge mistake, not where we messed up things. No, not at all. This reset is more than that. Yes, we've got to look at the things that we do need to change. There's some soft resets that we need. But be more than that, we need to tweak our lives to try and make it better. And this is why we will have a take two. This is why Grace Place today has a take two. This is why you could have a take two, is just to start making things better. We know that as we walk in God's plan, we automatically make things better. Sometimes a take two happens, not because anything is wrong, but simply to make it better. And you know how we do that? By choosing to make things better. We can choose to make this country better. It starts with you and me. It starts with us making the right decisions when we are faced with those things that we might even think are simple, but at that moment is not. So we take a take two to make things better. As a church in our new location, I believe we will be making things better because I really believe this is where God wants us. I remember when we were building the stage, and this is how it is. Kieran and I, we came along here very excited. How are we going to plan the platform? It's, it is smaller than the one we had before. That's fine. But we, we came up with this idea. Let's, let's put a hole through here. We've got permission from Amanda and everything. And we said, let's, can we build like a, like a container sort of thing out here so we could have the drum booth in there? And we've got permission. And so we came and we measured. And we thought, okay, we're going to have it that high. There's going to be a step. Just so you know, secrets, there's basements under here. And uh, we can put the basements under there. So we sort of built it that way. And then the idea was, no, we can actually hang the basements up. And then the idea came, no, we've got to put them under. And what we had done was we had measured wrong. And uh, Pastor Virgin and his team had built the stage. The metalwork was done. We were ready to put the wood down. And uh, we realized that now that the basements had to go under, we realized that they didn't fit. Man, I was annoyed. I was so annoyed because we measured wrong Kieran. I think, were you, were you at the numbers side or was it me? Was it me? I apparently was at the numbers. He was holding it at the bottom. I was measuring there. So it's my fault. Okay. I was annoyed at myself, let me tell you. I really was. And uh, we built this and I wanted the step to be higher. It was supposed to be higher, you know. Um, just so you know, I'm just sh sharing some of the things that I, I've gone through. Uh, you have no idea. And... Uh, <laughs> And so poor Virg had to lift the stage. The stairs were made. Everything was done. He had to lift everything, cut it apart at the back here, take two. Now, could we have left it? Yes, we could have. But remember at the previous church, we had the basement sticking out here. It annoyed me every day, those basements. We used to even try and walk. It just They were out in the way, and I really wanted them under. So we had to lift it. We didn't have to, but we wanted to make it better. And there are things in your life where you don't really have to. You don't really have to change. You can live your life the way you are for the rest of your days and probably be fine. But why not make that change where it is better? And I remember I was thinking, like, let's do it now. We thought maybe we'll do it afterwards. And I was thinking, we've got to take the carpets off again. We've got to take the wood off. We've got to... Let's just do it now, even though time was running out. And sometimes in life, we may think that time is running out. It is never too late to make it better. An old dog can learn new tricks, apparently. Our old dog of 16 years has new tricks all the time, so I know that for sure. He knows how to test me. He knows how to tempt me. He knows how to irritate me, and he finds new ways all the time. So old dogs can learn new tricks. But we are here on this earth to try and make things better. Where are you in life? Are you ready for a take two? Here at Grace Place, we are on a take two, not because anything was wrong, but because God is moving us in this direction, we must be willing to make it better. We must be willing to move towards God's plan in this moment. And I know sometimes we're not happy with our lives. Then there needs to be a reset. Sometimes we just need to make things better. But you know, when our lives become full of self, when I live my life just for me, I put all those apps in my life that are going to make my life comfortable, that are going to make me happy, and I'm not doing anything for God, that's when I find myself in dangerous ground. So whatever you're going through in your life today, whatever you need right now, 
It is not found in the things that we download externally. It's not found even, even, even in the people around us. If we want to make things better, if we want to make our marriages better, our relationships better, if we want to make it better at work, if we want to make it better at church, as a child of God, if we want to make our lives better, then it's important that we realize that in a take two, we have an opportunity to leave what was behind and to step into the future, to step into the now, actually, so that the future is bright. And you know why we need to do this take two thing? Because the Bible says in Revelation chapter 4, you are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and they exist because you created what you pleased. We are created for his pleasure. I have been created for his pleasure, and so have you. And if my life is not living to please God, I need a reset. If my life is not living to please God, I need to make a change. I need to tweak something in my life in order to be the blessing that I can be, not only to God, but to the people around me. But here's the thing. When we want to take two, when we want a reset, when we want to make things better, it's going to take tenacity and it's going to take energy. And I think that day when I was daydreaming, I had no energy left at that moment. And then to have to take a take two when you're trying to do something right the first time. Do you know how quick those energy levels go down? I think we all experienced it. The pastors, the staff of our church, members, just random people came along here working till late at night. We are so grateful. You got tired. People are looking at us going, you actually look quite fresh for all the work you've done. They said, everyone's actually looking quite, but we're excited for this new journey. We're excited for this new venture. But it takes energy. You know what I started doing? I started seeing the outcome rather than the work. Because when I saw the work, man, I got tired. But when I saw the outcome, it was like, let's get this done. What outcome do you want your life to be? What do you want tomorrow to be? Next month, next year? Get the energy to make it happen. It's a choice, and that choice leads us to the next level. So I don't know as I close where you are in life. I've had to search my heart. At this new beginning, why don't you make a new decision? A choice in the next phase. Because I really don't know where everyone comes from. I don't know what you've been through in life. I don't know all the influences that have been in your life that have brought you to this place, and I don't know, but God knows. And because He knows, He is able to help you. He is able to help you with everything that you need. He is a good God. He is a good God. And so tonight, today, not tonight, this morning, I want to ask you a very, very important question. Besides the fact that you may need to reset certain things in your life, you may need to reset your life 100% towards God. You've been living your own life. You've been doing your own thing. And you know you need to reset. You may be in this place and you've been thinking, I've just been living my life. I haven't been trying to make it better. I've done no, nothing. I've made no choices to make my life better. Maybe today's the day where you're going to choose. Hey, I need to make the things around me better. We wait on other people to make it better. No, the pastors of the church can make it better. I don't know, whoever. It's their job. No, it's my job. It's your job to make things better. I want to make things better. Do I get it right all the time? Ask my wife. She's right there. She'll tell you, yes, I do. See, confirmation right there. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, I'm joking. Make it better. And so I believe at this point, I want to ask you a question. If you feel like your life has no meaning, no point, if you feel like your life has just been going in a direction and you feel empty, you feel like everything you're doing is for no reason, 
Like Solomon wrote in the Bible, life can seem like such a vanity, vanity upon vanity. We just do something and we live and we die. There is a purpose to all of this. It is an eternal purpose because we've been put on this earth for a period of time. And when we say, take our last breath, our lives do not end. We are eternal beings and we leave here and we go from here. And here on earth is where we choose where we will spend eternity. When we choose to reset our lives and say, God, I need a reset. I need you to take over. I want to live for you. I'm tired of living for myself. This is when you give your life to Him. You see, the Bible is very clear. It says that for you and I to enter the kingdom of God, we need to give our lives to Jesus. We need to be born again. You may have heard of that phrase before and thought, what, what is that? Where is that even from? It's in the Bible. Go read the book of John chapter 3, where Jesus tells Nicodemus he mustn't be born of his mom. He's been born of his mom of the water. We need to be born of the Spirit so that our spirits become alive to God. And maybe today your spirit is not alive to God. You do not live for Him. I want to ask you today, if you want to give your life to Him, I'm going to give you an opportunity to pray a prayer and give your life to Him. The Bible is clear. If I believe with my heart and confess with my mouth on the Lord Jesus, the Bible says I will be saved. It is as simple as that. I don't have to work for it. I don't have to get on my knees have you come and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. It is a free gift that's been given to us that paid the highest cost of Jesus' life. And when we accept Him as Lord and Savior, we reset our lives and we have an eternal home. So just for a moment, I want you to close your eyes. Listen to the song that Kiri sings.